Hey guys, Adam here, and I'm here with another tutorial with Generate Press and Generate Blocks on how to create a custom blog post template. This will create a consistent layout and style for all your blog posts. So all you have to do is insert your text on the Gutenberg editor, and they'll all look great and cohesive. Let's begin. <music> Alright, so this is the blog post template design that we're going to create today. Uh, as you see, it has uh, the publish date, we got the blog post title, um, the author gravatar image with the name, a featured image with a nice little drop shadow, uh, we got an angled shape divider here with the background color, and then your blog post content. So what we're going to do first is go in and make sure you have a blog post created. I don't have a blog post yet, so I'm going to go ahead and drop in this content. So copy the title. Let's grab the text. bullet post immediately alright so now we got our blog post in place uh, now we need to go set up that element style on generate press and design it with generate blocks so that it pulls in the dynamic content we just created from our blog post into the nice design we're gonna create so what you're going to do is go to the WordPress back in here, go to Appearance, Elements. We're going to add a new element, and this is going to be a block element. We're going to go ahead and title this Blog Post Template Design. And first, what you want to, going to do over here is Element Type. We want this to be a content template. That's going to tell the theme that what we're creating here is the content for the blog posts and where to display it. Uh, now go back on the editor width after you change content template and go ahead and change it to 100%. We just want to make sure it looks accurate on the back end here based on what we're designing. Alright, so first off we're going to create a container and we're going to add a bunch of spacing in here. So since we have a merged header we're going to want more spacing on top than we are on the bottom. So we're going to go about 180, 20, 60, and 20. We'll give that a shot to start and see how that goes. Um, then let's go ahead in that container, create a insert a background color. We're just going to do a light gray. And we're also going to go ahead and drop in that shape divider. So when you go to down to shapes, hit edit shape, we're going to go to an angle, we're going to make it white because we don't want it to appear, we don't want that portion to appear, we want it to cut into the gray. Um, we're going to go ahead and do a hundred height, we're going to flip this horizontally, I want it to go from left to right, down to up, and that should do it. So now, <clears throat> insert a block. We're going to insert the grid block. We're going to go ahead and do 50-50 layout. And now first, on the left hand side, what we're going to insert is the date of the, the publish date of the post. Uh, if we go back reference here, October 3rd, 2022, this is what we're going to insert as a dynamic text. So you're going to insert a headline block. Go ahead and hit paragraph, uh, come down here on the bottom right, hit dynamic data, enable dyna dynamic data, data source is current post, post date, publish, and you can leave the rest the same. So now you can already see it's inserting October 3rd, 2022. Uh, we're going to go ahead and style this a little bit. Um, I'm going to say 14 point font, let's make this all caps. 
Um, and let's give this some um, 0.25 letter spacing, uh, just to give it that nice look, uh, similar to our example here. All right, so <clears throat> next we're going to enter another headline, as this is going to be our post title. And this is actually going to be an H1. If we come on down again to the bottom right, enter enable dynamic data, the current post, under post, title. And as you'll see, it's already pulling in the title of my blog post here. So blog post template design is exactly the title of what I'm creating. So that's the post it's pulling in. So anytime we create a blog post in the future, it's going to pull in that title of the blog into this H1 automatically for you. All right, so what we're going to do is hit enter and we're going to insert an image block. Now you can notice we want the image block from generate blocks, not the standard image block here. So you'll notice the blue icons are generate blocks. Go ahead and click that. And on the right hand side, enable dynamic data again and leave current post image source. We want to be author avatar. Now by default, this is 50 by 50. Uh, we want it to be a little bit smaller. So we're going to go 30 by 30. And then we also want it to be circular. So we're going to go ahead and do a 20 pixel radius all the way around. And because we want this image to appear in line with the author name, we're going to say float left. All right, now go ahead and enter a new headline. Whoop. Make this a P tag and hit the dynamic text block here. And that's where we're going to enable the, the option for the author name. So drop it down, click author name. Before text, we want to say by. So it's a byline for the author on that blog post. Uh, and then leave the link type as is. Now on the left hand side we do want to create a little bit of space between the image and the text. Um, so what we're going to do is go to spacing, um, let's say padding left, uh, 10, oops, maybe not padding, margin left, 10 pixels. Hmm. Maybe let's try it on the image. There we go. All right, so now we got our author by name, byline. Uh, we got the blog post template design, and I actually want to add a little bit more padding there on the bottom. Let's go 40 margin, um, and for this one, the standard 24 should be okay. All right, let's go ahead and save the draft. And next, what we're gonna do is insert that featured image on the right hand side. Uh, but first. We need to make sure and create some horizontal gap in between the two columns. So when you select the grid, let's go ahead and put a 60 pixel gap in between. It'll create some nice padding there and just allow things to breathe. All right, so what we're going to do first is insert the generate box image block and go down again to dynamic data enable that and select image source featured image so what's that going to do is pull in the featured image that you set for the blog post automatically and display it here um, now we don't want it to necessarily be this big full size uh, referring back this one is a little bit different orientation we're confining it to a, a, a width height and width that we like better that works with the layout so what I'm going to do is do 800 width and let's go um, 400 or you know what, let's do 350 height. All right, so what, next what we're going to do is enter that blue drop shadow as you can see here on that featured image. So what you're going to do is click the container that image is in, scroll down to effects and we're going to create a box shadow effect. So let's add an effect. Color, we'll choose this nice blue color, it's similar. Um, we're going to go minus 10 on horizontal and minus 10 on vertical. 
blur, let's go to zero. And go ahead and close. Now, so now you see it's there. Um, however, we want to round those edges. So we're going to say 10, 10, 10, 10, all the way around the radius. And we're going to do the same on the image. We want that to match. So we go 10 and hit the link. So they're all the same. All right. Um, next thing I notice here is right now, this column on the left is top aligned with the featured image. We want those to be a vertically aligned center. So we're going to say center on that. Once you click the container, come over to vertical alignment and click center. All right. So go ahead and hit save draft. And now what we're going to do is add in the post content block so that it pulls in the content of your blog post. So select the container at the top, hit enter. We're going to create a new container. Uh, we're going to do about 80, 20, 80, 20 on padding. And on this, we want the blog post width to be a bit slimmer than your usual page. We don't want it to go full width. Um, so the inner container width, I'm going to go with 800. It's usually the, the set number of pixels I go on blog posts. So you're going to go ahead and hit insert a block and we're going to say dynamic content. It's that GP dynamic content block. We're going to choose post content. All right. So now what's that going to do is pull in that blog post content directly from your editor on your posts uh, and display it. So we can now say save draft. Uh, we'll want to take a look at this, but before we do that, we need to set the location so it's displaying on the blogs. So we're going to say blog, or nope, excuse me. We're going to scroll down and say post all posts. And users, we want all users. And so essentially that's telling it on our all of our posts, we want this layout to be displayed. Uh, now, of course, if you have some kind of custom post type or uh, you know, a different post. We want to make sure and exclude those so that it's only applying to your blog posts. So we'll go ahead and hit publish. So what we're going to do is come back to our blog post that we created earlier, go under posts, hit view, and whoop, you see we got some conflicts here. So uh, this is a good example of some troubleshooting on the fly. So what we're going to see is this is a page header or page hero template I've previously created as an element, but I did not exclude posts for where the location should be. So what you need to do is go to your elements. Uh, and what we see here is page header. I'm going to click into that and you'll see this is exactly what's displaying. We need to go to exclude and add exclude posts, all posts. So we'll come back to our page, refresh. Okay, it's looking a little bit better. <laughs> Still need some help. So uh, what we need to do is set a new layout for the blog to go full width. So we're going to say add new element layout create we're going to call this blog post layout um, we're going to say no sidebars and content we want full width no padding display rules again we want location post all posts users all users publish let's see if that did the trick refresh all right it's looking a lot better now, what I just noticed, though, is our featured image is missing because, well, I never uploaded one. <laughs> so um, what we're going to do is edit this post, go to the featured image, select a featured image. Let's go ahead and select this one, hit update, and let's say view post. All right, that's looking a lot better. I think you would probably agree. So we've got our date, we've got our headline, uh, we got the author byline, we got our featured image, and we got our content. Now, 
the issue here is you see the featured image is cut off at the bottom by that shape divider. So we need to go in and edit the Z index on that uh, container element here and pull that image in front. So what we're going to do is you can hover over elements, click on blog post template, and we can come to, I believe, here. So if you come to the container on the right-hand column here that holds the featured image, if we say 5 and 10, I think that's going to do the trick. You can see the dotted lines here are appearing above the divider now. Um, so we need to go back to our site, um, go to blog, and there it is. So now our image is on top of the shape divider. Uh, looks a lot better. We got some nice spacing here, giving us some padding uh, from our navigation. Uh, and then we got our content. All right, so that was it, guys. That's how you can create a blog post template design using Generate Press and Generate Blocks. Hopefully, some of the hiccups I ran into along the way uh, will help you in troubleshooting maybe some problems you might run into as well. Thanks for watching.